Hey, what's up? This is Jesse Warden. I've only had one cup of coffee, so bear with me. Terry Payton, cool game developer down in uh, Sydney, Australia. He was talking about an idea this morning where he was going to create an enemy generation editor. It's basically where it's like a timeline, almost like in Flash or you know a music editing program or video editing program where you have chunks of certain enemies in certain times, and as the time progresses to the from the left to the right the playhead hits that, aka the playhead is representing what the current now is, and if it detects an enemy, it creates them with certain attributes in that particular instance of that little block has, right? And so I, I did something kind of similar. I didn't actually have a timeline editor, but I did use the concept of time and having certain enemies in certain instances that that time, uh, relation to time, and basically a long array. And I created an editor because there were so many levels I have to create, and I didn't want to have to create all those little instances and times you know, all the time, because it's just a bunch of data, right? And I wanted to be flexible, I wanted to edit it, and there's more than just enemies, there's certain things that can appear at time. So, I wanted to show a brief editor that I did, uh, maybe it'll help Terry, maybe he'll be like, dude, I'm definitely not going to do that. And I think Andreas uh, actually did something like this too, um, but his his could only produce Quiet Riot songs, so, anyway, um, my game is basically like a plane shooter. It's like 1950, 1942, where it has an overhead view of planes and they shoot and the enemies come from the top. And so my concept of um, time, and I'll show you what it looks like when you run it. Uh, my concept of time is the seconds. So yes, we know we deal with milliseconds, but seconds is generally the currency we're dealing with. So I'm going to open a particular level, Let's say level one. And basically, it's just a JSON file. So the same JSON file that this uh, Flex Air application, Flex 4 Air application, reads and writes to, is the same one that the Corona application can read and and just read. It doesn't actually edit it, but it reads it. And the reason that's important is that JSON in Flex in Flash is uber easy. JSON in Corona is uber easy. All the data types from strings, booleans, and numbers come over just as you would expect them to and it's really easy to parse and read and write and debug. You can actually open the JSON editor in a, um, you know, any text editor. You can, you can also go to, yeah, this one, JSON formatter, curious concept, and paste it in here, and it formats it, and it'll look really nice. Here, mine basically has a series of enemies that occur over particular time intervals. So five seconds show a plane. At seven seconds, show another plane. So every two seconds. Then every one second show. Then show two at the same time, right? So Terry's... Uh, view of a timeline is actually a little better because you can have two of the same instances occur in the same, you know, time frame. You can actually have them on the same track right here. So mine mine doesn't do that. Um, I've built timelines like he wrote before and they're hard. I could probably do it faster now, but I just, again, my biggest problem with games has been time sinks and been, you know, like a lot of pro game developers. I create a lot of cool stuff and I never actually deliver, never actually finish. <laughs> so I'm trying to renew time sinks, but I found that this was really helpful in, in creating levels really quickly and allow me to edit them and test them out quickly and iterate, right? So each one of these blocks is basically an event. An event, in this case, is an enemy or a movie. So these are the enemies that you can choose from. You can have a plane, a missile, jet, bomber, or UFO. Now, this little pause thing means, does it actually pause the game uh, time? So not in the game loop, but the actual time. So, for example, bosses, at the very end here, you have a boss. It actually will pause the game so the timer will stop, so no enemies will appear until the actual boss is defeated. Now, I don't have any code yet for, like, if you have three bosses at the same time and all three die, then you proceed. I don't have code for that yet. But for now, it's known that as soon as this enemy dies, it'll resume the timer if it uh, stops, right? Movies are similar. So so you can also delete, like, I don't want this plan. I just want two in the beginning. I want to make it easy for the user five seconds in. And this kind of gives time for the... Um, the intro animations and intro dialogue to happen, if any. Movies are just another event, but they allow you to actually edit dialogue, who said it, uh, what audio file I can browse to an MP3 file. I have a few. Um, I'm not doing anything special with folders here. This is all in the root. Um, all these icons right now are embedded in Flex. They match the exact same icons in the Corona source directory, so that's the only bad architectural decision, but I, I need to be able to visualize what enemy it was. It just helps. And uh, how long does this dialogue occur? You can have an entire movie, which has a series of dialogues that go one after the other. They can either autoplay, the movie can autoplay, or a piece of dialogue can, you know, you have to click it to advance, or touch in the case of a phone. That is a series of events, either enemies or movies. And just to show you what a level is, it's just an array of events, an array collection, which comes over as an array in Lua. 
and you either have an enemy, which has when does it occur, what's the time, does it pause the game, and what's it type. This is just a series of enumerations that you can show in that combo box that you saw. Configurations are configurations that have to do with game-specific things, such as physics, uh, body you know, types, uh, speed of the plane. You know, Certain enemies have different things, like UFO has four turrets, and it has certain times it can fire those, whereas the uh, jet has a certain amount of missiles when it can fire. So these configurations allow a little more flexibility, since they all go in JSON, and the actual game knows what it's looking for when it parses it out. Whereas Flex doesn't really care, just shoves it in there and says, I guess you care about this. Movie, just uh, another JSON object. When does it occur? Does it pause the game? By default, it does. And a series of dialogues, which is an array. A dialogue is some dude who was feeling some way said something on an MP3 file with some message that's text that's shown on the screen. Right? That's really about it. So when I actually take that file that you just saw in here, level two, I think it's level one or two. Let's try two again. Yeah, so two is just the boss fight, right? Notice the boss is there. But anyway, level one, when you start, about five seconds into the game, you'll see your first um, enemy up top. Now, the bullets you can't really see yet. I'm still working on that. But you can see, one, two, three. And then two will come one second after the other. One, 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 right? And then you'll have two at once. So that's basically how it works. Then you have some dialogue. I'm working on the text and all this stuff. Text is fun formatting Corona, let me tell you. No, actually it's not. Right, and then the level knows that that was the last enemy in the array. You've completed the level. So that's basically the uh, level editor in a nutshell. Again, it's just a flex app that runs in error so I can read and write files to the desktop or any directory I choose. I can make little windows so I can open and edit multiple levels if I wanted to, make a new level. Um, and create a new enemy, a new movie, save by level, or sort by time if I wanted to, if I actually had this at 2, it'll refix everything. And then I can actually save the level anywhere I want on the, de on the computer, and Corona can read that. Start it, you initialize it with a level object, which is just that JSON object puked out from here, and it'll go through and set them up in the events. And if you look at the game loop down here, it actually goes through each one of these events and starts parsing it. So each one of the events, what is it? Is it when does it occur? If it or occurs now, let's get rid of it, put it in the old event so we can rewind if we had to. If it actually pauses, we stop the actual movie loop. Uh, what's its class type? Is it an enemy or in this backwards compatibility with other files? Is it a movie, right? We dispatch events. This used to create everything, now it just dispatches events and lets some kind of control or command class actually draw everything. And then if the total time and everything is paused, then we actually have ended the level, right? So this whole loop just loops through everything in that JSON. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Hope it helps. And uh, again, Terry, I can verify that it's really helpful. I'm glad I, at first I was really frustrated because it was a time sink, but uh, it was really helpful in helping me do, you know, game levels really quickly. I'm sure your timeline editor will be a little better. It might give you more flexibility and it's helped me a lot. I'm sure it'll help you. Peace out.